I, I knew all along that I wanted to go into medicine from being a little kid. And uh, my dad was a physician. He is a graduate of Trinity College in the class of 47 and uh, provided a great role model for me. My, my time here was fantastic. Uh, certainly the education was fantastic. I thought the classes were great. And uh, when I think of the science courses I took, and I took plenty of courses outside of the science curriculum as well, which to me is very important to be well-rounded, to be able to interact with uh, whomever you come across in any walk of life. And the science courses were great, and I, I can verify that. When I went to medical school, I felt I was very well prepared for what, what lay ahead after that. <clears throat> I was in the office at the, at the time, so this happened uh, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I had done a small case in the operating room earlier that day and was just doing paperwork. And the, I had a phone call from the trauma program manager who happened to be at the finish line of the Boston Marathon and informed me that there had been an explosion. And I must say that I really didn't believe it at first, and I didn't know anything about the magnitude of it because there was no notification on CNN or any of the apps that we uh, have notifications. And then I went online onto the computer to see if I could identify any activity, and there was nothing. So it was still very early. But that said, um, I thought, well, this is curious. I better get up to the uh, emergency room and see what's going on. And so I called one of the orthopedic surgeons who I knew was on call. And I told him what I'd heard, and he said, I heard the same thing. I'll meet you in the emergency department. So we congregated up there, and already we had uh, one or two patients that had already arrived. So um, at that time... When we uh, realized what we were dealing with, uh, it was basically all hands on deck, and I called back down to the office and said to my secretary, find who's in the office right now and tell them to come and report to the emergency department. Uh, we have a system in place that deals with um, everyday traumas, if you will, and this was trauma on a larger scale. So that system was activated, and the uh, senior anesthesiologist came up from the operating room into the emergency department, and basically we congregated there and uh, collaborated with the emergency department to determine what our resources were and what we might expect coming in the door. <clears throat> now we were starting to hear reports from, uh, uh, from the field that it was more than uh, a one-off event. That uh, the first patient I saw was a patient who had a, a, a traumatic amputation of the lower extremity and a major injury to the other extremity. So we knew that this was a fairly powerful bomb. And uh, having cared for a number of patients who were victims of IEDs in the past, that we knew what we were dealing with and uh, then prepared for more patients, and indeed they came in the door. One of the advantages of this, and you might call it an advantage of this event happening on Patriots Day, is that it's a civic holiday in the state of Massachusetts. And because of that, um, we have a system in place for every running of the Boston Marathon. And believe it or not, there are probably about 200 to 250 patients a year who will run the marathon and require some medical care. And that medical care can occur, occur at any time during the course of the run or at the finish line. But about two, 200, 200 to 250 of those patients will be admitted to the hospital for hydration and temperature control and things like that. So we do have a ramped up system on that day. And that includes what we call Hospital Incident Command Center, and they were there as well. And they have good communication with the pre-hospital environment and good communication with the law enforcement as well. So there was a very rapid amount of information coming in very early on that kind of gave us a good idea of what, as to what we were dealing with. I had a call early Friday morning, about 4 in the morning, by that same, same anesthesiologist I had worked with on that Monday. And he said, I happen to be driving in to, in to go pick up my daughter at the airport. So this is early on Friday morning. <clears throat> and he said, there's a lot going on. I don't know exactly what's going on, but something's up. And apparently there were a lot of police out at that time. And so I thought, hmm, that's interesting. I better get in there. Because we didn't know what, whether this was the, the tip of the iceberg or there was more to follow or what. So I drove into the hospital and arrived there probably about 5, 5.30 in the morning. <clears throat> and... Soon thereafter, we were locked down, so people couldn't get in and people couldn't get out. And then we realized I uh, had some tidbits of information coming that something was going on in Watertown, which is a few miles away. And whatever, we didn't know what that would um, translate into, whether there would be more patients, law enforcement, whatever it might be. And so we kind of had to shelter in place, as the rest of the city did. And we were prepared then to take in casualties that might arrive from that event. <clears throat> 
Well, yes, uh, indeed. You know, I, I think that's important to catch a few uh, hours here and there, and I slept in the hospital over the course of those uh, days, the early days, and then um, when the dust settled and we had a plan with each patient, things became more um, uh, planned out and more uh, uh, under control, and I felt it was okay to leave after that. I will say to some degree, but only to a small degree. You can imagine it was a crime scene. Even at the hospital, it was a crime scene because the victims were coming in with uh, shrapnel and with you know clothing and things like that. That needs that's part of the uh, the evidence, if you will. So the place was crawling with law enforcement. Part of what I do as a trauma surgeon is to work with the pre-hospital environment. So that also includes working with the pre-hospital SWAT teams for the FBI and the state police. So I am familiar with them. We work together. We're part of that, that team. And to me, it was a little bit of an extension of what we normally do. And so I sort of know what their capabilities are and felt quite comfortable and actually was sought solace in having them there because they could watch our back while we did what we needed to do. And we had learned that uh, lesson very well in Haiti. Uh, we had the opportunity early on arriving at that hospital the 82nd airborne had been there for about 48 hours before we had and i went to the commanding officer there it was a lieutenant colonel who happened to be a, a, a physician as well and uh and i told him what we needed and he said anything we can do for you we will and thereafter it made it very easy in terms of logistics feeding what i call feeding and watering of the team they gave us water mres and uh and really obviously very good security which is what we really needed in, in Haiti because it was such an unknown, sort of volatile situation as well. Well, you know, you, you, there, that's a, it's a great, um, great thought. I must say it's a testament to humanity at times. Um, you know, it's, a, it's an awful event and uh, these people did not ask for it and are injured and otherwise were previously very healthy and all of a sudden find themselves missing limbs. And there was a tremendous amount of support and you can imagine the uh, we had amputees coming in, we had military veterans coming in to support the victims of the bombing. And, and I must say, you know, uh, Michelle Obama came to the Brigham Women's Hospital, we had the opportunity to walk around and she saw every one of those patients who were still there. And uh, one of the patients was actually in the operating room at the time of her visit, so she sat down and wrote her a note uh, in, you know, saying, I, I'm, I'm sorry I missed you, but uh, let, let you know we're thinking about you. And I thought it was very touching. So it was, um, all in all, it was a very um, uh, um, worthwhile experience, obviously, and be able to care for the patients. But it was also a reaffirmation of, of the, the best of humanity as well. I mean, we do. I'm, I, you know, we do with all the patients that come in through the hospital. And uh, that's part of what we do as, as a trauma center and as a trauma service and as physicians and nurses who take care of these patients. It's part of the satisfaction that we derive from uh, taking care of the whole patient. And I think that um, you can guarantee better outcomes. I think if you do indeed understand the whole patient and what they need to get better and let them know that we're in it together. I think I would because I'd like to see how it's depicted and uh, to see what kind of message they're trying to get across and to see how accurate it is. So I would, I would seek it out. remember at the time of the Haitian earthquake, uh, it was in January and we had snow on the ground up in New England and um, I remember sitting there in my study and having seen some of the, the pictures on the television and I thought, you know, this isn't right. I'm here, I'm trained, we need to help and it just seems like it's something we have to do. There's a point there where you're uncomfortable if you're not able to do it and it's almost more comfortable to get up, get motivated, get going and, uh, and do what we do best as a team and that's what drives me to do it. You know, what we did learn from the Boston Marathon bombing, which is very interesting, is there was a group from the Kennedy School of Government that developed this concept, not, not the concept, but capitalized on the concept that's already there called swarm intelligence. And that's how bees and ants work together without, you know, a plan ahead of time, without constant communication, verbal communication obviously is not possible, but they get the work done, whatever their work might be. And so they've applied that concept to the, after about 500 interviews of people involved in the Boston Marathon bombing from all walks of life. And they came up with some very important four or five points of which are sort of a unity of mission, trusting your colleagues, and really no blame, and people understanding that there's an overarching goal, 
and everybody just works toward that goal and they do what they do best. And again, I think when you saw that in action, which is true, to me that was the best of teamwork, it's the best of surgery, and it's the best of humanity coming together. And that's why it was so satisfying to be part of that.